Hello, beautiful beings. This is Maru Matu, and you are watching Sun Soul Astrology. And this is a daily planetary translation for May the 7th, 2017. And today, the collective sun is going to be at 17 degrees of Taurus, and the collective moon at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, 1900 Universal Time, is going to be at 12 degrees of Libra which is going to be joining the yod that we have going on. It's going to be in a two degree orb from Jupiter retrograde, and it's going to be joining that exit point there, okay? So this is kind of a big deal because it will be quincunxing Neptune and Pisces, which as we know is in that sextile over to the sun, and the sun is then quincunxing both now the moon and Jupiter retrograde. So I've been talking about this yod, right? This is the finger of God. This is our destiny point. And now it has an extra layer of interesting AF put all over it, okay? Um, these dimensional portals that have been opened on top of Pluto retrograde, giving us all this psychic ability and super consciousness, um, has been crazy. It's a lot of, um, it's a lot. It's a lot of dimensional shifts occurring right now. It's a lot of um, just really flexible reality. I think that for everybody out there who is intuitive and already really perceptive and gets the fact that this is an energy-based universe on a different level than most people, we're really kind of just like in awe, right? And then everybody else who sees the world as much more of a solid material foundation um, is definitely probably like tripping balls right now. But I do want to definitely talk about this new element of the moon joining into this party because like yesterday I was seriously like bugging out and I've been doing so much research today in my own like rabbit hole dimension, dimensional searching and then I had readings all day and after I was done, um, it took me a minute to get to this daily because I really just couldn't stop in taking information. I'm just having like a ton of downloads of my own and in the veils being so thin, it's it's almost hard to like actually use words because it's just, it seems so much more efficient to just like telepathically communicate right now, you know? Like can't we just like blip into the quantum realm like all of us at once and just, you know? But yeah, we can't be trusted yet, so no. But what I wanna talk about, okay? Uh, the acid trip, right? Here's the thing. <laughs> When the Neptune quincunx is the moon, okay, so like if you're someone who has this in your natal chart, Neptune quincunx moon, or even conjunct it, right? Conjunct again means like next to it. Um, this is like the trippiest, don't know if you're dreaming, don't know if you're awake element ever. So I'm like, oh wow. Hmm. Hmm. I kind of already don't know if I'm awake or if I'm sleeping with all of these crazy, you know, sun trying or sextile Neptune, Neptune sextile Pluto, Pluto trying the sun. That's like the biggest portal. That's like no more veil. That's are we in a flesh suit or are we back in spirit form? I'm not sure, you know? It's kind of crazy. And you know, like Jupiter is retrograde, right? So all of our spirituality is, is going inside of us. And then Jupiter is quincunxing Neptune, you know? That's usually it's like a questioning of a belief or a structure, someone, something, you know? But Whenever it goes inside, it, it makes us go deeper. Like deeper, deeper. Like 
more into spirituality, like more into the soul, more into consciousness. So we're like to suck, about to suck ourselves into our own black hole, right? It's pretty intense. And like yesterday in the geometry of the degree, you know, the moon at zero degrees of Libra, fucking epic, right? And the chart is just like geometrically revealing itself. And that's why I've been going down this rabbit hole. Um, you know, thinking about Aldebaran and Antares and whenever all this stuff happened before, you know, like just a lot of crazy stuff. And then I didn't really realize, you know, like Lilith is conjunct Antares. You know what I mean? So like, what? You know, and so Lilith is sextiling the moon today. You know, if you really look at the mythology of Lilith, whenever they show pictures of Lilith, um, they're showing pictures of the ancient Anunnaki goddess, Anana. So I don't know if they just got the wrong picture or the wrong story, but I'm gonna have to look into the mythology a little bit deeper because I don't buy it to tell you the truth because, you know, I'm an RH negative blood type and I study Anunnaki, like Sumerian, um, like creation story stuff, you know, like past where they go with the Lilith story. So whenever they depict the Anunnaki goddess Inanna, um, I have to question it. But basically, what Lilith represents is just wherever the feminine energy has been damaged, you know, like we're sexual beings as well, wherever we've been made to feel bad about our sexual power, our mystic power, our beauty, you know, anything, anything that gives us power, right? And it kind of makes sense because Anana actually is the you know anunnaki owner of planet earth like in the movie jupiter ascending you know where like homegirls like scrubbing toilets but she happens to just fucking own the earth and like all those like aliens come and like they find her and you know she gets that stamp you know her dna like says she owns the fucking earth that is anana okay like that's a story about that so, I'm just saying. Now, Antares, as I was mentioning yesterday, um, is the heart of the scorpion, right? And it has, some it has some ability to basically banish darkness, you know? Get rid of negative energies and spirits. But it has, you know, some really negative associations. And usually shit does happen whenever things move through Antares. Now, interesting enough, okay? Aleister Crowley. If you're not familiar with Aleister Crowley, I'm not going to say a ton about him. Um, but his reputa reputation usually precedes him and most people know him from the Aleister Crowley tarot decks. He actually had... Lilith conjunct Antares in his birth chart. And he channeled some interesting energies. So, in my investigations, okay, into all of this information, I did find something very interesting, okay? Because we're talking about Alderaan and Antares, okay? Alderaan is the eye of the bull, and it is in the constellation of Taurus, but it's in the sign of Gemini. And Antares is in the constellation of Scorpio, but it's located in Sagittarius. They're two of the four fixed royal stars, but they are the only two that exactly oppose each other at 9 degrees and 47 minutes. Now, the interesting part about this is that Alderaan is a star of illumination, right? 
And Antares is the star of anger, pride, and revenge. Now, Alderaan is said to be a portal into the mysteries of the mind whenever it's balanced with Antares. Okay? That makes a lot of sense, right? Because... <laughs> Because Isis and Osiris are a part of this story right here. It makes a lot of sense because we're essentially talking about Scorpio and Taurus, right? And whenever we get into this again, okay, Venus, right? Venus and Isis right now are in the sign of Aries. Okay, Venus is at five degrees, Isis is at eight degrees. So they have a three degree orb of conjunction. Now, it's a good question if like Venus is Isis, you know, they both have the same essential representation. Um, definitely the feminine goddess energy, beauty, love all that sort of stuff. There's a huge, huge, huge connection in astrology between the two. Like, Isis is connected to Taurus, right? Osiris is the representation for Scorpio because he is the representation of the god of the underworld, Pluto. Now, I did recently tell the story of Osiris, how his brother Set murdered him, dismembered him, Isis put his pieces of him back together, found him, put his, the pieces of him back together, reanimated him, birthed Horus. Now, whenever we're talking about this portal between the two places, okay, if you balance the two, you know, okay, Isis is that illumination into the mysteries of the mind. Now, Isis is also connected to the star Sirius. And Osiris is connected to Orion. So Isis with her representation and Osiris, okay? So if you connect the heart of the scorpion, okay? A lot of power, but also a lot of hurt and a lot of anger because obviously that was some shit, right? But when it becomes balanced with his twin flame, which Isis was actually like literally his freaking twin, like twin sister. <laughs> um, it becomes a portal for them to both rise into a higher consciousness, right? Because that energy of Antares representing the Osiris could have that anger and that, like, you know, Antares, is, like, can kill, you know? It can kill. It, it's, it's like a death kind of a thing, you know? Like, murderous kind of energy. Um, revenge, you know? So, it's really interesting to see how all of this is coming together right now and how all of this is approaching these parts as these big doors of portals are opening, right? You know, because Mars is like still right there, you know? And Mars is the co-ruler of Scorpio, right? It's really profound. I, I mean, I just want to like transmit the energy in this like crazy way because it, it, you know what I mean? Like we've had this grand T-square for a hot fucking minute, but then the moon coming in here also makes it like a double and then the position that Venus has moved to makes it a double. I don't even know if I'm making sense because it's so much, but on such a higher level. So what I'm trying to say is that um, for us, the ones that are here trying to really forward this ascension process, for us that really are here of the light and the love that are working towards the progression of this planet into a higher dimension, 
we just really need to stay grounded, stay present, um, and just really, you know, take it easy. Like, no need to push ourselves into the outside world, like, unnecessarily or too harsh because, um, like, where are we? Like, what are we doing kind of a thing? And, you know, the reason that I mentioned Aleister Crowley is because he had some deep connections into some super secret societies that used some really deep indoctrinations for some really bad purposes here. Um, so some of these configurations that are going on, for those that have eyes to see, those that are in the know, uh, could possibly take very, you know, good advantage of these sort of configurations for the negative. You know what I mean? So if you want to slip through some dimensions and do some work on the other side, this is a really good time. So definitely beef up your own personal protection systems and uh, don't slip on any sort of level right now. Definitely realize that, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to um, work on some newer, pro I'm going to I'm gonna work on some new projects for everybody to just give a bit of a different ver <clears throat> I don't even know how to say it. That's how much of a download is coming out. Cause don't forget, right? Like Uranus and Mercury are still together, right? And Mercury still hasn't come out of its shadow from the retrograde. So we're still in this like quantum shift, right? And we had like this direct DNA download into like our actual cells. Like we are going through like, like I haven't been bullshitting anybody about our ascension, our DNA upgrading. Like we're feeling ascension symptoms, you know? So it's here, you know? And I am doing the Pluto retrograde readings every day, just like back to back with all of you amazing beings out there. Like our minds are just like blowing together. Like you guys, oh my God. I'm humbled in the highest version of humbled. I am meeting so many people that are just, wow. Like literally, wow. Honor is all mine to read for all of you, truly. And it's so amazing to see that, you know, you guys were just already falling in line with your soul's mission through Pluto. So no mistake that we're here right now doing what we're doing on this path, you know? So yeah, it's time for us to step up our game a little bit higher. And um, I mean, destiny freaking like, rang us up and was like, hey, are you ready? Like, it's go time. We got this yacht going on. The moon is joining. Like, we're like changing reality. Like, Neptune quincunxing the moon. Like, the moon, our intuitions. And that's what's crazy, okay? This is what's blowing my mind about, like, Lilith. And the depictions of Inanna, okay? And, like, the owner of Earth. That's weird, right? Like, who could fucking own the earth? Oh yeah, like, Anana. It's said in ancient Sumerian texts that are like crazy, 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 crazy old. And yes, that's an actual like technical age of old. Um, <clears throat> the, the moon is an actual satellite like not a planetary body like not like what we call a luminary you know we call the sun and the moon a luminary and it's kind of weird you know to i understand it completely and i've felt this for a long time it's definitely why the moon transits signs every two and a half days it's an information giver you know, that's why we're so connected with it. That's why it rules our emotions. It gives us our emotions. Damn fucking near. 
It transmits the information that we need. And not everybody can handle that or accepts that or wants to hear it, but it's intense, right? So if you can entertain the idea for a moment that the moon is a satellite and right now as it transits through Libra, we're getting this vision, okay? We're getting this transmission of a connect, the connection to Neptune, right? It's blasting us with these Neptunian frequencies coming straight from Pisces. And so it's like our internal world of perception is being tuned in to the dream world, okay? Because that's the dream world, Neptune, Pisces, dreams. But we'll be awake, right? And then Jupiter, it expands whatever it touches. And we're talking about it touching the moon, <laughs> who's tuned into this frequency of the dream channel, right? But Jupiter's expansion of this channel is ex expanded inward. Like, I hope I'm explaining this correctly. Because, you know, like, it's one of those, like, are my eyes open or closed? Like, I don't know if you've ever had the experience when you go to sleep and you close your eyes, but, like, you literally see through your eyelids. And so you're, you're like, touching your eyelids to make sure that they're closed, but, like, you still see through them. And so, like, you're... Like, you can't put enough pillows on the top of your face because you could still see through. I, I mean, I don't know if you've ever done that, but I have. Um, that's kind of what it's going to be like, you know? It's going to be interesting. Because we just got a lot going on. But then, you know, don't let me forget before I go into the degrees to just give some serious respect to all of the fire energy that we have in the sky. We have some serious transmutable power going on. And it's like, wow, fire is energy, right? We have Mercury, Venus, Uranus, Isis, Saturn, Lilith. Wow, we got a lot going on. Hmm. So, let me get into the degree for today. The degrees. All right. So, the collective sun at 17 degrees of Taurus today. A pomegranate broken open. The spilling out of blood and guts. Arriving at the critical point where it all comes out. Huge relief and release. Something held forever with great tension and pressure, yet destiny brings such a reckoning of all the places at once that you will postpone it as long as you can. The freeing up of karmas when all else is lost, the glory and defeat, the great turnaround is always in you. And waiting for it is the hardest thing you will ever do. It has to be so ripe to busting the moment that counts. Timing is the great art. Everyone freed as you are freed. Nothing held back any longer ever again. Hmm. I like timing is the great art. Everyone freed as you are freed. But yeah, that's like some Pluto energy right there. Like that's the vision that Pluto's been giving me about what his message is right now. You know, like we really have to take care of ourselves and really have to um, find that ultimate way to fall in love with ourselves, however it might be for you. You know, we're all so different that, you know, we have to customize it, really. And um, if you can't do it for you, it's like we have to do it for humanity. <laughs> and that's really what that's trying to say is everyone freed as you are freed. Because, you know, 
it's not like they're gonna get freed first and then you're gonna get freed. That's kind of the, the greatest lie of all of this, you know? It's the biggest hoax ever played. <laughs> We've just so been, everything is backwards, you know? So like, that's what I was trying to say yesterday. And I think that's what all of this is about in these configurations is like, what if the dream world really is the waking world? You know, like that whole, there is no such thing as time. Like time is like non-linear, you know, like we're all eternal, you know, cause it, there is no time. Like what if this is the dream world where there is linear time? Like what if where we think we're awake right now is where we're really fucking asleep? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's an interesting concept. It really fucking is. But here we go. The spilling out of blood and guts, arriving at the critical point where it all comes out. That is just so, so Pluto. And I mean, yeah, we got a yod with the exit point being Jupiter and the moon now. And you know, emotions, they feel pretty ouchy. So sometimes that does make us feel like our blood and guts is spilling out when we arrive at some critical points, right? Huge relief and release. Something held forever with great tension and pressure. Yet destiny brings such a reckoning for all the places at once that you postpone it as long as you can. You know, that's so interesting, right? Because we travel to so many different experiences through our incarnations, different worlds, different everything, you know, really. And we're holding on to like our mission, okay? So we chose to forget why we incarnated until the right moment of activation. And I was given this perspective during a reading today. You know, sometimes, I mean, and I've talked about this before, like sometimes your mission just might be so fucking big that the knowledge of it might actually scare you out of doing it. You know, it just might be too fucking huge. And you're just like, oh, never mind. I'm good. Like, bye. Like, um, yeah, I'm good. But on the other side of it, um, <laughs> on the other side of it, like sometimes like whenever we go to battle, you know what I mean? Some of us have certain roles that we're going to have to pull out at a certain moment, you know, that destiny fucking moment. And we need to forget until like the second that our soul has to like thing and like hero steps in you know the whole archetype you know like lilith in the heart of the scorpion with antares you know and this like dimensional portal opening like this illumination of this oh shit honestly like the reckoning of all the places at once that you will postpone it as long as you can. The freeing up of all karmas when all else is lost. The glory and defeat, like it just goes, you know what I mean? And like this inaction of the soul just comes out, you know? And like it's that huge release and the relief and the great turnaround is always in you and waiting <laughs> and waiting for it. Waiting for it is the hardest thing you will ever do. It has to be so right to bursting, the moment that counts. Timing is a great art. Everyone freed as you are free. Nothing held back any longer ever again. Hmm. I kind of have a different perspective on some things now. But yeah, the veil is so thin. I wonder if all of us really knew our mission the whole time, like if we would be able to fucking wait. Like, 
if we would be able to hold off, you know? Like, I'm sure a lot of us would just fuck shit up by, like, getting trigger happy and going buck wild, you know? Or not spilling the beans, you know? I'm sure we silenced ourselves for some really important reasons. Because, you know, it's like, there's so many roles that we all play. You know, some of us are healers. Some of us are timeline jumpers. Some of us are warriors. Like, some of us are on that etheric battlefield. It's interesting. It's interesting to think about all these different jobs, you know, and why we came here and like what star systems we're from. And yeah, it's a lot. It's exciting. It's an exciting time right now. <sighs> okay, so we're going to read the degree for the moon. And this is at 12 degrees of Libra. Now remember that Al Grab is at 13 degrees of Libra. So Al Grab is all snuggled right in between the moon and Jupiter. Okay. So, the burning of a bush of sage. That sounds familiar to yesterday. What happened to me? Wishful thinking, hoping for the best, looking towards a new start. Naive and gullible. gullible. You are suspended, quiet, receptive, and lacking in discernment. Desiring with authentic feelings to bring a resonant impulse to bear, yet hubbled by blind fever and tunnel vision, prone to easy ways out and ideological positions, you are oddly poisoned between sheer reflective inwardness and exaggerated attempts to come out with ways to get on with the shared reality. A bit confused and at a loss, but charming, endearing, appealing, well-intentioned and idealistic and ways half delusioned and half genuinely restorative. This is a good reminder, you know? Because it's like, we always wanna believe the best in people, you know? And I preach discernment all the time. I'm always trying to remember or remind everybody that we're not here to play the reindeer games. We're not here to Netflix and chill. We're not here to like run around in our onesies. Um, the people that watch my channel, we have a different mission. We have a different job to do. And it blows my mind to see it in all of your charts. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And you know, we're talking about the degree of Libra, right? And I'm gonna definitely soon get into some Libra redefinitions. But Libra always wants to really believe the best in people. So they always give people the benefit of the doubt. It's like, you know, your first day of school and you automatically start out with an A, you know, and it's like your job to keep that A. That's like what Libra does with everybody. Even if they're like, discernment alarm goes off and they're like, don't do it, that person sucks, you know? Like, they're like, no, it's okay. Like, I'm gonna be friends, you know? Um, <laughs> there's something good in them. It's like that. So this degree, you know, burning the bushel of sage and thinking that that's gonna just cut it, right? Because that's wishful thinking, hoping for the best. Like, the sage will work. Bye, negative spirits. Looking towards a new start, naive and gullible, you are suspended, quiet and receptive, and lacking in discernment. What I was mentioning with all of these portals open and, and Taurus and all of this, I don't know if I said it quite right, um, but yes, like, if you saw Doctor Strange in like the mirror dimension, if you've ever heard of like MyLab and MK Ultra, the mind control, there's just some serious shit in this world that, you know, is really real, you know? And to be naive and gullible about it, you know? Like you don't have to scare yourself, but you do have to protect yourself. 
you do have to be spiritually firm. You do have to be in control of your mind. You do have to be in control of your auric field. You do have to remove yourself from the possibility of being infiltrated. You know? <laughs> Desiring with authentic feelings to bring a resonant impulse to bear, yet hobbling by blind fever and tunnel vision. This is a Libra aspect as well. You know, Libra rules the seventh house, you know, so it's like they associate it with relationships, you know, like dating, you know, and we all desire authentic feelings whenever it comes to that aspect. And so we're looking for that in people with the resonant, you know, impulses, like we're looking for the people that bear those in reflection of ourselves. And sometimes like that blind fever, we're fooling ourselves. Like we have tunnel vision for what we're looking for so badly that we'll just lie to ourselves. We'll totally fool ourselves. And so again, this is an aspect that I need to point out with the quincunx from Neptune to the moon. We really, 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 as much as fucking possible have to discern are we awake or are we asleep? Like, is reality real or is it not? Like, and to answer the question of what is real and what isn't, like, in the quantum realm is just absolutely kind of crazy. So, this is an interesting fucking aspect, you know? Speaking about the mirror dimension. All of these things. This is whenever complete, like, science fiction, like, the craziest shit is actual truth. That's what's really nuts. You know what I mean? Like, this basic third dimension, you know, like, work, 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 normal, 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 car, soccer, food, husband, dinner, read a book, fireplace, harsh dishes, laundry. That's not... You guys know what I'm trying to say. Like, wow. What an interesting day to have this degree, right? Prone to easy ways out in ideological positions. Hmm. A lot of times we don't accept responsibility of the truth because we really want what we want. We really do. You are oddly poised between sheer reflective inwardness and exaggerated attempts to come out with ways to get on with the sheer reality. This degree is kind of bubbly. <laughs> you are oddly poised between sheer reflective inwardness and exaggerated attempts to come out with ways to get on with the sheer shared reality. Hmm. That's deep to me. I'm processing that because like <clears throat> this degree is conjunct Jupiter retrograde, which is expanding all of this inward, that sheer reflective inwardness and exaggerated attempts, you know? Um what are these exaggerated attempts that's gonna come out to get on with a shared reality? Like I hope it's a positive co-creator experience, you know? The last one with the blood and guts is going to be interesting, though. A bit confused and a bit at loss. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> but charming, enduring, appealing, well-intentioned, and idealistic, and ways half delusioned and half generatively restorative. Hmm. Wow. Well, I'm excited to see what happens. I'm glad I have the day off. And I am definitely just going to continue on down my rabbit holes and start to just, you know, put some more pieces of, of the puzzle together and see what's going on because no coincidence that all this is happening at once. And um, I hope you guys are all putting your pieces of the puzzle together as well. And definitely take a look at the show more button below as I am doing the Pluto retrograde readings. $30 for 30 minutes and I will see you tomorrow. I love you. Job bless. Me. Absorb my life Let me loom
Whispering 